Good morning. Hello everyone. Um, my name is Josh. I'm from Explorer Dome and I'm coming to you live from my back garden in Bristol. And uh, it's a very sunny day, so apologies if I'm squinting a lot. Um, the sun is directly in my face and it's slightly breezy, so who knows what could happen. But I guess from being indoors uh, and working from home, these are, well, these are probably the best conditions we could really hope for. Um, and uh, today, uh, I'd like to share with you some um, uh, some chemistry from uh, what I show all about states of matter. Uh, and I have actually got a question for everyone um, at home. What's the what's the smallest thing that you can think of? Have a think. What's the, what tiny, tiny little things? I mean, there are tiny things all around me at the moment. There are probably some bugs creeping around in these plants over here. They're pretty small. Um, I have a think about tiny little tiny things because that's what I want to talk about today tiny things it's the tiny things that everything is made from have a think and I'm gonna keep an eye on these uh, comments here uh, oh hello hello Lucy uh, how's it going hello Nikki oh hello Susan all the way in Wow, in Kenya. We've got people from Kenya watch. Um, hello, hello. Amazing. Um, everything is made of tiny things. You, you've probably heard of things like atoms and molecules. Uh, but you could say everything is made of particles. So the air is made of particles. This is made of particles. This table. Uh, this, this flag here, very nice flag, uh, is made of particles. Um, the water you drink is made of particles. Um, so everything is made of these particles, but you can't drink a table. Uh, you can't place things down onto water, uh, and it would sink. Uh, you can't sit on a chair made from air. But if they're all made from particles, then how can this be the case? Well, it's all to do with how these particles are arranged. Now, you can't see an individual particle. But imagine that this is a particle. And it's how they are arranged and how much energy they have that can tell us whether it is going to be a solid, a liquid or a gas. The states of matter. Now, have a look at this. These particles are arranged in a neat cube and they don't move so what is this what is this if these particles don't really move what sort of thing is it have a think about that um, to say that they don't move isn't entirely true because actually on the particle level they have got some energy but they've got very little energy there's hardly any energy in these particles they're just kind of vibrating Vibrating. Let's have a look. Any idea? Da, 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 da. Oh, hi, Lee. Um, da, 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 da. These, these are arranged as a solid. Particles in a solid barely move. They just vibrate ever so slightly. They're ever so slightly vibrating. So these particles are a solid. And what I want you to do is have a think and write in the comments examples of things that are solid. Maybe you also can have a go at being a solid. This is an easy job, it's an easy acting job. You just have to sit still and maybe just vibrate a little bit. <laughs> Can you be a solid? I'm a solid. The thing is though, there's hardly any energy in this solid. So what happens if you add energy? And when I talk about energy, really, I'm talking about heat. So when you warm, when you heat up particles in a solid, they get more energy and they can change. These solids can change into particles like this. And these are particles that move and flow. And if you put these particles into a container, they would take the shape that that container is. So they would sort of fill it up. These particles have got a little bit more energy and they like to go with the flow. These are a liquid. So. Have a little think in your head and maybe get someone to write in the comments what liquids can you think of? And we're going to come back to these in a minute. So have a think. What liquids can you think of? Liquids, 
Liquids flow, they move, and maybe you can move and flow like a liquid and go with the flow. Yeah, they've got a little bit more energy. So these particles have got more energy than the solid, but what happens if we keep adding more energy? And remember, when I'm talking about energy, I'm talking about heat. So let's heat up this liquid. This is a liquid, let's heat it up because these particles are gonna get more and more energy. And eventually they're gonna have so much energy, they're gonna go and they're gonna whiz around because these particles are very energized. They're whizzing around right now. These particles are a gas. And have a think again. What gases can you think of? Right now, the gases in the air are bouncing off your face, bouncing off the walls, bouncing off everything. They're whizzing around and they are very far apart. So the particles in a gas are much, much further apart than those in a liquid and a solid. And they take up a much bigger space. They're absolutely huge. So have a think. So who's given me some examples of solids? Let's have a look. Da -da -da -da. Let's have a look. Um, have we got any good examples? Solid, solid, very nice. Soils, nice. I like that. So, so that's um, Pete. Uh, hi, Pete. Um, soils, yeah, you're right. Soils are going to be made up of tiny particles of, of solid, very much like sand. Sand is a weird one, isn't it? Because sand's kind of it seems to flow and move, but really it's just loads of little particles of a solid. So soil, that's a great one. A chair, very good, obviously. Thank you, Helen. A chair is a good example of a uh, of a solid. Tables, very good. Some wood, Nancy, you're right. Tables, yep. Um, glass, yeah, glass is a I mean, there's some people, uh, there was a, a rumour going around a while back that um, glass was somehow actually a, a, a liquid and because um, because uh, over time it sort of drips and down and gets thicker at the bottom. Apparently, apparently that's an urban myth I heard. And that's pretty disappointing. But um, um, but glasses are solid, definitely. Rock and concrete. Thank you, Alex, up there in Birmingham. Uh, you are right. They are solid. Okay. What about some liquids? Let's have a look. Oh, Jemima says crisps are solid. Yes, they are. They certainly are. That's what makes them so lovely. Um. So liquids, liquids are things that flow and move. Let's have a look. Who's got some examples of some liquids? Let's have a look down here. Uh, liquids, da -da -da -da. water, yes, of course. Shampoo, I would say most of the liquid in shampoo though is gonna be water. You could correct me on that, I might be wrong. Um, <laughs> AdBlue, AdBlue, that's one for the uh, for the grown-ups with uh, fancy diesel engines. Um, uh, that's a good question. I don't know. What is AdBlue? Is it what is AdBlue? I had I heard a rumor it was something to do with pigs wee, but I don't know. Um, bubble bath is a liquid. You're absolutely right. Lemonade, but lemonade is water. So actually, so far we've got lots and lots of water. So the liquid in soup, Lucy, is water. Uh, juice and cola there from Lisa. Water. Those are all the same. Water. Juice is water. Any other liquids that aren't water? Have a think. Things like oil and petrol. Those are liquids that aren't uh, water. Okay, gases. We've got some good example of gases here. Uh, da -da -da -da. Da -da -da -da. Let's have a look. Gases, gases, gases. <laughs> got some names. Oh, oil. Ah. Ruben says oil. Ruben, you're absolutely right. You're a smart guy, Ruben. Oil, absolutely. Um, Olivia, tea. Uh, yes, please, is the answer to that one, uh, Olivia. Thank you. Um, oil. Ah, well done, Lucy. Yeah, you got oil. Very good. Olive oil. Very nice. Ooh, pitch. I like it. I like it. Who said that? Daryl. Nice one. Pitch. Um, right, gases. So there's gases in the atmosphere. Uh, the gas in the atmosphere, around 21% oxygen, but mostly it's a gas called nitrogen. And at the moment, these particles are whizzing around with lots of energy. But remember, you can change a solid into a liquid and a liquid into a gas and go back the other way. And it's all to do with energy. Um, so if you turn a solid into a liquid, this is called melting. But what is it called when you turn a liquid into a gas? Think about puddles on a warm day puddles out here today. It's pretty warm and breezy, so they're not going to last very long. They don't just disappear, but they do change into a gas. And gases can change back into a liquid. They're the reverse. So when a liquid turns into a gas, it's evaporation. It evaporates. 
And when gas is turning to a liquid, it's called condensation. It condenses. Um, and uh, you can feel evaporation happening if you've got any hand sanitizer. If you're lucky enough to have some hand sanitizer, if you put it on your hands and rub it and rub it and rub it and rub it, after a few seconds, do you still have hands covered in hand sanitizer? No, no, of course not. Um, it evaporates. It turns into a gas. Um, it comes becomes part of the air. Uh, it does, of course, kill everything, uh, like germs and hopefully viruses, maybe, if you're lucky. Uh, but when gases come together, when you take the energy away from a gas, and you cool it down, you can turn it into a liquid. Um, but don't forget that gases are made of stuff. We're surrounded by now, right now by lots and lots of stuff, and I can prove it. And you can, you can definitely do this at home really easily. This is a bottle. Is it full or is it empty? Well, let's see what happens if I try and blow into it. I've got a balloon in here, and I'm the only person to have blown into this balloon. This is my personal balloon, health and safety, hygiene. Yada, yada. Um, I'm going to blow into this balloon and let me see if I can inflate it. Ugh. Well, I can't. Ooh, maybe quite lightheaded. Um, I can't inflate it because this bottle is already full and it's full of air. You're right. It's full of air. Absolutely full of air. There's a hole at the bottom. So uh, if you want to try this at home, just get uh, an adult to help you. It's pretty tricky, but you need to get a hole in the bottom here. Um, and if I uncover the hole and blow into it, and then cover it up again, look what happens to the bottle. It's been squished, but I didn't squish it. So how did it get squashed? Hmm? How did this bottle get squashed? And it's all to do with the air pressure around us right now. Now, I don't know uh, whether this is true, but I heard, and maybe maybe my, my colleagues who are helping you in the, uh, in the questions here can find out, or maybe one of you can find out actually and let me know. I heard that the, the, the air from the top of my head all the way up, if I went in a straight line, all the way up to space, to the edge of the atmosphere, would weigh as much as a small car. Is that true? True, I don't know. Um, maybe you can find out. Let me know actually, because I'm really keen to know. Um, but uh, it's that air pressure that squashes this bottle. So, air is made of stuff, and it is indeed made of nitrogen um, and oxygen. And remember, you can take uh, gases, cool them down, and turn them into a liquid. You can see this on a cold morning. Like this morning, it was frosty cold. When you breathe out, you can see this cloud of, of uh, what looks like, like smoke or dragon's breath. But really, that it's just water, water that's normally invisible as a gas in your breath, cooling down and becoming tiny droplets of liquid. This is called condensation. If you have a shower and you can't see yourself in the mirror because it's got loads of fog on it, that's condensation. That's water that's turned from a gas into tiny droplets of liquid. And um, this, this is possible with, with all gases, really, um, including nitrogen. But the trouble with nitrogen is... Um, to turn it into a liquid, you would have to cool it down to below minus 196 degrees Celsius. That is incredibly cold. And as luck would have it, in here, I have liquid nitrogen. Let me just pour a little bit out. Listen carefully. And very rapidly, this liquid evaporates because the temperature difference between this tablecloth and this liquid nitrogen is well over 200 degrees temperature difference. So it evaporates very, very rapidly. So it is a liquid at the moment, but it boils away at minus 196. I'll show it to you again. And I just want to show you a few things that, um, that I enjoy doing with this liquid nitrogen. And we do have to be pretty sensible um, because it is, it is so incredibly cold. So I'm going to pop on some some protective eyewear and I'm going to show you these. These are rubber tubes. Now they might not seem like much of a solid but they are a solid at the moment. They're kind of a flexible stretchy solid but they're also very very hot. So what happens if I put them in here? Watch carefully. Da, da, da. 
As these hot tubes, I mean, they don't feel hot to me, but of course, if you're minus 196, then these are incredibly hot. As you uh, place them into the liquid nitrogen, the liquid nitrogen boils away, evaporates. And remember that gases, when they change from a liquid into a gas, they take up a lot more space. So all of that expansion pushes it all the way up the tube and some of it comes out. Whee! There we go. But now these are very solid indeed. Let me try it. Maybe I can bring it even closer. Let's have a look. They will eventually go back to being flexible again, but they're still pretty solid. So this liquid nitrogen is incredibly cold. Um, so what would happen to me if I put my hand inside, do you think? If I put my hand in this liquid nitrogen, of course it would freeze. I'm mostly made of water. The water in my body would freeze solid. So of course, pouring it on myself would be a really silly idea, wouldn't it? Ooh, oh my word. Oh wow, look at that. But actually, I can barely feel anything and I'm completely dry. Again, the temperature difference between my hand and this liquid nitrogen is, is huge. It's absolutely vast. Um, which means that uh, it doesn't even touch my skin. It evaporates before it even touches my skin, which is great. Um, so I'm not going to plunge my hand in there, though, because if I did leave it in there, it would, of course, freeze solid. So I'm going to plunge something else living inside uh, this liquid nitrogen and see what happens. A flower. Flowers, like us, are mostly made of water. And the water in the flower will freeze. Listen. Shatters like glass. I'm gonna bring the camera a little bit closer. Now, um, that means picking it up and wobbling it a bit, and that might make you feel a little bit bleh. Hopefully it doesn't, but I'm just gonna go and bring it a bit closer so you can see what's going on. Here we go. Okay. And I want to show you this um, this nitrogen a little bit more closely. At the moment, it's bubbling away. And it's bubbling away because this tube is very hot. But eventually, the tube will cool down and everything will settle. And it kind of just looks a bit like a fizzy drink. But um, would you want to drink this? Definitely not. Definitely don't want to drink this. Um, and not for necessarily the reasons why you might suspect. It's not because it's cold, I mean, that is a problem, of course. It is freezing, freezing cold. But let me just show you, just a quick look. I have a balloon. I have a little tube. I'm going to pour a small amount in here. A tiny amount of liquid nitrogen has gone into this tube. Just about this much. Take a look at the balloon. The balloon has gotten much, much bigger. All of that 
gas, that nitrogen gas, has evaporated from a small amount of liquid nitrogen that I placed inside this tube. So if this is your stomach and you swallow some liquid nitrogen, it will very quickly evaporate and, ooh, yeah, not great. And there is one more thing that I want to show you. It's one of my favorite, favorite things uh, to do with liquid nitrogen. Um, have a look, this is a pot. It's polystyrene, it's a good insulator. And this is a balloon. Just a normal balloon full of normal air. How many will I fit in here, do you think? Just one, just the one. But what happens if we cool the air down? Remember, gases, big gases, when you cool them down, they change and they change into a liquid. So check this out, see what happens. I'm gonna pour that on there. You can hear that sound. So now that there's more space in there and there's enough space for me to put in another one. And I wonder if anyone can tell me what they think is going on. How is this happening? How is this balloon strangely appearing to shrink? Let me try another one. Uh, some of you might be wondering why uh, I'm not wearing um, protective gloves. Well, the trouble is the gloves that you need to sort of handle um, uh, liquid nitrogen generally uh, are very big and very clumsy. So actually, I need to be quite careful. But if I am careful, uh, I can I can get away with not using gloves because actually I would become clumsy and I'd probably drop things. I'm more likely to drop things. What has happened to our balloons? Well, let's find out. Have we completely destroyed them? No, be a little bit careful that they don't blow away. I kind of don't want them to. Oh, that one's off. That's why I've got them on strings so I can hold on to them. Look at that. That's amazing. I love it. These balloons are uh, as good as new, pretty much. And they have survived their shrinking and expansion. This is all to do with solids, liquids, and gases. Right, they're gonna blow away, end up flying across town. If I'm not careful. Pop that back in here. So all together now, <laughs> what's this one? A solid, very good. What's this one? Liquids, very nice. And what about these? <laughs> Gases, awesome. Um, I'm gonna move the camera back over there. So hold on to your breakfasts, people. We're going for a bit of a ride. So, solids, liquids, gases, turning from a solid to a liquid, melting, turning from a liquid to a solid, freezing, turning from a liquid into a gas, evaporation, turning from a gas into a liquid, condensation. There are lots of different experiments that you can do. Um, of course, not everyone has 
oodles of liquid nitrogen at home. I'm very lucky. But there are all sorts of different experiments that you could do with the expansion of gases, the contraction of things, uh, freezing things. I'm sure many of you got a freezer at home that you can try freezing things. But of course, always ask an adult to help you with anything that might be considered dangerous. Um, but thank you so much for your attention. Thank you for watching. Um, now it's time to try and answer some of your questions. So I'm going to have to bend over and look at this uh, screen for a second, see if I can pick some out. Let's have a look. What have we got here? Okay, so um, da -da, right then. <laughs> I love Monica's idea of a life hack: no more blowing up balloons. Maybe, maybe you should. Uh, maybe they should start selling balloons that come. Um, pre-frozen and you just uh, inflate them. Um, let's have a look. Uh, Imogen uh, used a great word there. Now, um, gas to a solid. Uh, things can change um, from a solid to a gas and vice versa. Um, so we're familiar with this pathway of turning from a solid to a liquid into a a gas, but there it is possible for some things, um, something like dry ice, which is carbon dioxide ice, it's solid. Um, they call it dry ice because it doesn't melt into a liquid, it turns actually straight from a solid into a gas, and that is called sublimation. Um, but the opposite way around, turning from a gas into a solid is, is actually called deposition. So sublimation, deposition, um, and things like um, dry ice are a good example of that. Um, so that's it. Yeah, it's a great point. Very good. Nice word. Sublimation. Sublime. Love it. Oh, Dot wants to know, how does the balloon blow up when you put the gas in it? Um, well, when you blow into a balloon, balloons are stretchy, so you can actually force... I mean, the bottle that I tried to blow up earlier isn't very stretchy, so I couldn't put force any of my air into there. But when you blow into a balloon, because it's stretchy, you can actually store more air into it um, because it gets bigger and bigger and bigger. But all of that is um, that stretch is like potential energy uh, squeezing that, that, that air um, and it wants to come out. That's why when you pop a balloon, of course, it releases all of that and it makes a very loud bang. <laughs> Tristan wants to know what experiments I could do with, uh, with Coca-Cola, with cola. Um, <laughs> well, uh, all sorts of things you can do with cola. Um, it's a liquid, but it's also quite acidic. Um, it's, an, uh, it's got lots of something called phosphoric acid in it, and you can use it to like clean things. Apparently, clean things like uh, like dirty pennies. Uh, but it's certainly not good for cleaning one's teeth. Uh, it's not a good idea. Um, and, and of course, there's the classic uh, uh, Mentos and cola explosion. Um, that's that's quite messy. Uh, I'm sure you could. I'm sure many of you have tried that at home. Uh, <laughs> Ollie wants to know how did I figure well I how did I figure all this out well I've got to be honest Ollie I, I didn't figure all this out this was figured out by scientists actually mostly many um, uh, many hundreds of years ago or, or thereabouts things that people like like Boyle yeah um, uh, scientists called Boyle and he uh, Boyle's law and there's Charles's law all of these things to do with gases very clever stuff um, so uh, I didn't I didn't figure it out I've got to be honest I didn't figure it out um, Let's have a look. Can you freeze cola? Uh, well, yes, you can freeze cola because cola is mostly made of water. Um, and by putting it in a freezer and that water gets to uh, you know, zero degrees or below, it will start to freeze. Water's really weird, actually. Water's strange. For, <laughs> very strange. Um, now, mostly solids. Solids of most things take up less space than their liquid. Their liquids are actually slightly further apart. But because of the, the nature of, um, of water molecules, and when they freeze, they actually get slightly further apart. So with water, the solid version of water, ice, is less dense than its liquid state, which is it's pretty unusual. Can you imagine a world, though? have a think about this, imagine a world where, where ice didn't float. Have a think about that, what would happen? What would the world be like? It'd be pretty weird. Uh, Oh, Barry! Oh, Bazaar, Barry Wheeler. Is there anything smaller than an atom? Yes, Barry. Um, of course, there are many strange things that are going on inside an atom. Atoms are very, very tiny. And actually, you need an incredibly powerful microscope to see just an atom. But inside those atoms are subatomic particles, protons, neutrons, electrons. 
strange things like quarks and leptons. Now, I'm not going to pretend that I understand those things because I don't. That is not my area of expertise at all. But that's uh, certainly something that does exist. So, uh, yes, m many, many things smaller. Oh, lots of people planning on doing um, the Mentos and Cola. Yeah, do it outside. Um, it's really messy. Yeah, <laughs> that's my advice. Um, uh, how did the balloons go back? Well, let's do a balloon. Should we do, should we do another balloon? Let's do another balloon. Let's just freeze another balloon because uh, I do enjoy it very much. Um, so let's just uh, pop one there. Going to go go for gold. Let's go for gold. Okay, so let's just do another balloon. I'm very I'm keenly aware that I said it would only be half an hour and we've already waffled on for longer. But um, if I pour this cold, cold nitrogen onto the balloon, the air particles in that balloon, which were full of energy, whizzing around, remember, um, they, uh, they're cooling down. And that cold, cold temperature, that, that, is, that is taking that energy away from them. And they're getting closer and closer together, get, taking up less and less space and turning actually into a liquid. So actually what's inside this balloon now isn't, isn't the gas, it's actually liquid air. So there'll be some liquid oxygen and liquid nitrogen within this balloon because it's freezing, freezing cold. But let's take it out into the sunshine again. And those liquids will warm up and they will expand and they'll take up much more space and they'll become a gas again. Gases take up huge amounts, around 600 times more space than the solids, uh, the liquids. So that's how we do it. Oh, hello. Oh, yeah. Sorry, oh, I got neighbours. Hello, neighbours. I'm just just casting to the uh, to the world here. Um, but thank you so much for your questions. Thank you for tuning in. Um, people from all over the world, uh, thank you. And uh, tune in next week. I think we'll probably do, do something exciting about the, the science of of water possibly and many other things as well we'll have a look at the night sky um, and if you've got any requests uh, we'll do our best to accommodate them but uh, thanks so much and uh, stay safe stay uh, you know two meters and all that and uh, don't forget to wash your hands um, there we go thank you so much folks bye